Hey, what up, Long Beach? Welcome back to your home for everything local sports here at the Gazette Newspapers and the Press Telegram. Another episode of Long Beach Sports Talk, where two is the loneliest number since number three. <laughs> As always, I am Go Sports Editor JJ Fiddler to my right. And Mike. <laughs> I can't believe I have to learn our sponsor's information now. This was always someone else's job, but that person is gone now. So, we'd like to thank our sponsors, as always, for everything we do at GazetteSports.com and the Press Telegram. That would be Naples Rib Company down on 2nd Street, catering high school sports teams for 25-plus years. Go get a bottle of barbecue sauce and pour one out for your boy. Mm-mm-mm. And, obviously, we, of course, want to thank our new sponsor, Long Beach Transit. Their route number one now stops at Cal State Dominguez Hills, the South Bay Pavilion, and the StubHub Center, home of your LA Galaxy. These episodes of Long Beach Sports Talk have been chock full of high school football so far this year. We're going to mix it up a little bit. We will get to the high school football. We're going to run down every game happening in the local area. A couple big matchups in the San Gabriel Valley League. But first and foremost, let's talk about some other sports. This week, Wednesday, at Cabrillo High School, More League Boys Water Polo is doing something very cool. They're calling it a showcase but really, it's just the whole league and nothing but the league. So help you more. <laughs> well, I, we think this is really cool, and not just because it makes our lives easy. Saves right. us a lot of mileage when we can go see an entire the entire league. But look, th- this is something we got brought into doing uh, cross country by the Poly Girls cross country coach Nate Burstell in our first year because he pointed out, hey. When else do you get to see all seven schools from the Moore League in one place? Uh, that same year, we went for the first time to the Steve Lewis Memorial Volley Fest, a great day of high school girls volleyball that Lakewood hosts every year in honor of their uh, former coach, Steve Lewis, who passed away. Uh, similarly, this year at that uh, fest, which is going to be a week from Saturday at Lakewood, they'll have Jordan, Milliken, Polly, Lakewood, Wilson all in action. And we love that. For two reasons. One, like we said, it makes it makes our job easier to get to see everybody there. But number two, I think it also underlines what we love about high school sports, which is that community aspect that all these people know each other, the parents know each other, the kids all know each other, and it's just kind of cool to have a relaxed, laid-back setting where everyone can sort of hang out, I guess. Right, not to wash us too much, but that was one of the things that we really wanted to do when we first started covering sports in Long Beach, was get these communities together. I can remember watching Chase DeYoung, and I believe it was John Juju Smith, meeting each other at the Century Club Sports Banquet and saying, hey, I've seen you on the Gazette's right, videos. Right. You're, you're amazing. And then they shook hands and we were like, oh, that's yes. history. Well, because that was something you and I did talk about from the very first day. I said, you know, when I was growing up in Long Beach, you would never have seen that. Poly football players, Wilson baseball players, or Lakewood softball players, and Millican soccer different players. Worlds. They were completely different worlds, and that was sort of our challenge in figuring out how to put the website together. Is How do you make these people care about more than just their team. You know what I mean? And I do think uh, we certainly can't take all the credit. I think there's been kind of a rising like Long Beach pride movement with all of the different t-shirt companies and hat. You know, you you just see so much more, even more Long Beach apparel out there than you used to. Um, And I think that that's a big part of it too. People, it now means a little bit more to a poly kid that, oh, Wilson kid is doing well because, hey, they're still from my city. Right. And with this more league water polo showcase, you do have the top the Wilson, the defending champion, the team that's won a CIF championship within the last five years. And then you've got the other teams like Cabrillo, who's literally just starting their More League Boys water polo program. (laughs) Wouldn't you want to be around the greatness if you're trying to be great? You have to see where everyone else is in order to pick the league up as a whole because every high school coach knows the better your league is, the better prepared you are for when it really, really matters in the postseason. Right, absolutely. So those games are going to be Wilson taking on Jordan, Milliken playing Cabrillo, and Lakewood playing Polly. Now, those are just the regular games that were going to happen this week. Instead of being in three different pools, they're in one, which means that JJ, who's kind of handling water polo this year, is going to get to see all six of those teams in a three-hour span, which I think is great. No, it's going to be really fun. It's going to start at 4 o'clock. They're going to go back to back to back. So look for that coverage. back to back to back. (laughs) Look for that coverage on the website, obviously. You know, we're talking about these other sports, and obviously the logistics of water polo make it a lot easier to do something like this. A lot of the Orange County water polo powerhouse leagues do these showcases every year because it's possible. Because cross-country is possible, you can see all seven. Let's live in a perfect world for, like, five minutes. What are some of the other sports where we could see? Like, wouldn't it be cool if basketball 
the Moore League versus, let's say, the San Gabriel Valley League or the Suburban League. Oh, every and it's year. just like five games back to back to back on a Saturday. Every year a coach basically looks at us and goes, you guys should do that. And we're like, we don't have the time to organize something like that, man. But uh, there there was, I mean, one of the great traditions in Long Beach sports was the Milk Bowl that they used to do every year at Vets. The idea was that all it was the week before the season started and all of the teams, it was kind of a scrimmage. So like Wilson would play Polly for a half and then Polly would play Lakewood for a half then Lakewood would play Milliken for a half. So you'd get to see everybody. Everyone was there. They did it literally to raise money for the milk fund for the LBUSD's cafeterias. Um, and it was a huge deal. I mean, they used to sell vets out for that pretty much every year because it was that community thing we talked about. Now, unfortunately... As we all know, the world of high school football has changed. People don't really do things for fun anymore. Um, right. So there's one injury, and you know they kind of shut it down a couple decades ago. But I, you know, there's a reason that event was so popular. And I certainly think with basketball uh, or volleyball, you know, the, the sports where people do play a lot, that we could we could see more of that. And I, I think basketball would be a good one because the Mo league has been more competitive the last couple of years. Again, I think soccer would be great if you could get like two, even just back to back. How much fun are the back to backs at Blair Field? Right. There's so much fun because every Vets, there. If you could go to Vets and get uh, like Lakewood Milliken or Lakewood Poly and then Milliken Cabrillo yeah, yeah, or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be great. Yeah, it would be so much. I think, honestly, it comes to Vets because Vets is the most accessible. But it's expensive. It's very expensive, <laughs> but it's the most accessible. And look, if you're looking for a place that is really trying to reconnect with the local area with Long Beach, Long Beach City College is headed that way. They're they're, they're making job, the right. they're adjusting and they're making the right hires right now and they've got good people in good places. The connection to the Long Beach community and specifically the high schools could really take that thing to the next level and I think events like this could be the linchpin for that. We're going to go buy the books. Buy right? the books. <laughs> so we take a quick flip through the CIF Southern Section polls for the week. Obviously start at football, uh, the sport that most people are excited about. JJ has got one of the games of the week by CIF rankings. In the Southeast Division, Dominguez ranked number two, Downey ranked number four. Those two SGVL powers will be playing on Friday with young J.J. Fiddler there. If I could uh, invoke the man who no longer sits, it's lit. <laughs> it's going to be lit, and it's going to be lit for four really fast quarters because they will run the ball in that game. It's going to be old school. Yeah, we'll talk about it in just a second. Don't show up to that game late. It might be halftime. Uh, <laughs> that is sort of the press telegram division. We also have La Mirada at number six, Paramount at number seven, and Warren, those upstart Gutty little Warren Bears, 4-1 and one receiving votes in the Southeast Division. Obviously, the big boys in the Pac-5, Bosco, still ranked number two. Polly still ranked number six. I think the question there, I mean, one through eight is exactly the same in the Pac-5. And I think the question is, how much movement can there be? Because Polly's not going to lose to a more league team, but right. are they going to move down for losing to De La Salle? Do they really have to beat De La Salle to be considered a top four team? And you also have to ask the question, how many Trinity League teams is St. John Bosco going to beat and still stay at number two while Corona Centennial beats up on the big eight? We, we talk about this all the time with the rankings, right? You have to do the rankings because you have to have some basis, some transparent basis for how you see the playoffs. And right. So that's really all. The only thing that comes out of these rankings is the top four teams get seated in essentially if you're thinking of it in NCAA tournament terms four regionals right right so here's your top seed of this quarter of the bracket etc cetera, etc cetera. but it's not like the NCAA tournament where anybody beyond number four is seated so if you are five the through the rest four, right that's just a draw it's not a seeding I think a lot of people sometimes get confused with that when they see the top tens and they're right. like oh well they're gonna get an easy opponent because they're in the top ten not the case you have to have a preseason poll from their perspective because you just have to start from somewhere and I understand that. I don't. I, 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 we've I, had I, this conversation I know, before. I know we have, but what you run into when you do that, which sort of proves your point, is a situation like this. I don't know anyone who's a football mind in Southern California who thinks that Corona Centennial looks better than Bosco this year. Truth. With all due respect, because Corona Centennial is still great. I think they're the clear-cut number and two. And they're the defending champions. But Bosco, to me, looks as good as their 2013 national championship team. Yes. And they're, t they're number three and number four in the country in the two major polls on USA Today and Max Preps. They certainly deserve to be there. They say they run through the Trinity League. Which win will be the one where you go, right. well, now we have to move them over an undefeated defending champion Corona Centennial team? I just don't know that that will happen. It, I think it's the modern day game. Modern day game is in two weeks, I believe. It's but at they, modern day. Modern like, day's number three. Bosco's like number two. The winner of that game should be number one. 
I, I don't know. I, but I don't think that if they if they beat Notre Dame in a close game, I don't think that they'd move over to Cronus Centennial because Cronus Centennial is going to be ten and zero. So what would they have done to have lost their number one spot? Play the more league style schedule they at the end of the season. Well. The Big Eight is good. The Big Eight right. is good. It is not the more league. I don't want to get that confused. But comparing it to the Trinity League, I mean, the Big Eight doesn't have another team in the top ten. Right. The Trinity League has three. Right. The Trinity well, and, the, uh, and two of the other ones are receiving votes. So yeah, Bosco will be uh, just to give a quick note. They do start. Trinity Trinity League play this week. They will be playing one of the <laughs> couple Trinity League teams that is not in the top ten as they travel to face Santa Margarita at Saddleback College. But we do just have, a four and one team, Santa Margarita. You know, with a with a, a Division One NCAA quarterback. So just just you know, regular game. That's the that's the <laughs> cellar dweller in the Trinity League at this point, boy. It's tough out there. We should get to La Salle. Who fell from number seven to number ten? Very surprised they stayed in the top ten. Got to be honest with you. Yeah, definitely, they're certainly looking like the West Valley Division is kind of getting away from them. And uh, shocking uh, that Edison and Los Al are both two and three, and they play this week Thursday night at Huntington Beach High School for what really is first place in the Sunset League until they play the rest of everybody. Now, obviously, Newport Harbor's been good recently. There's some other teams that are getting better, but no one is quite at that low-style Edison level. So you've got two, two and three football teams playing a football game that could decide the league in the first week of October. Right, right. It's just sometimes the schedules don't work out the way they're supposed to. St. Anthony also ranked in the East Valley Division. They remain at number six after a close win over Valley Christian. The Crusaders, who lost to the Saints, fell from number eight to number ten in their division. So those are our football rankings. Oh, and Avalon. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Our eight-man football rankings, Division One Avalon out there on Catalina Island, still ranked number two behind the powers of eight-man football Mojave. Let's go back to water polo for just a second. In Division One, Wilson's still at number eight, and in Division Four, Cerritos is at number eight. In girls volleyball, obviously, uh, some teams getting some interest. No one in the top ten. Really surprised not to see Long Beach Poly in the top ten for Division One AA. They've proven to be one of the better teams in Southern California. They had, I think, the best uh, performance at Durango of all the teams in Southern California, yet still sitting just outside receiving votes, as are Lakewood and Los Alamitos. St. Anthony still getting some love down in their division. They're receiving votes in the 4AA poll. Mayfair also receiving uh, votes in the 3AA poll. So a lot of teams knocking on the door of the rankings for volleyball, but not quite there. Although, as we mentioned with Polly. So I sort of don't understand the rationale. I think they only have two losses. Uh, if you look at some of the teams that are on there, I think they've proven to certainly be better than a couple of them. That's what happens. One thing that's weird with these rankings that we mentioned, they're important for determining those top four seeds, but depending on who's on the committee, sometimes there's not someone who sees a whole area of the southern section. It's a huge section. And so these committees really have a big responsibility to try and see everything that's going on, and obviously that's not always possible. Would you think a coach's poll would be a better reflection of quality of teams if they could figure out a way to do that? I think probably not, just because I think once people realize that it would affect their playoff seating, I think you'd probably have people who weren't necessarily doing it in good faith. Now, a lot of the people who are on the committees are coaches, so there is that, but at the same time, I think if you're sitting in a committee with other people looking at you, that's a little different than if you're just sending it out and all the more league people are going to go, well, we got to vote the more league up because we got to get a decent playoff shake. <laughs> yeah, I think it would definitely would depend on the league and the division you're in because some of those would really matter and some of the other ones wouldn't. I just always wonder about that because you're right. I immediately question the validity of the coaches poll in the NCAA football leagues. Right. Like all of them. Every single one. Division 1, Division 2, Division 3. Like, these are just a bunch of guys lying to each other. That's exactly what it is. We do have tennis teams ranked. Long Beach Poly number 6 and Wilson at number 9 in the CIF Southern Section Division 3. They will actually be playing each other at Wilson on Thursday. Warren is number 10 in that division. On the cross-country side of things, we do have a couple of girls teams ranked Long Beach Poly, still number eight in Division One. Although they will look to move up, they're running at the Woodbridge Invitational with uh, a lot of the nation's top teams this weekend. Cerritos Valley Christian, also number 10 in the Division Five rankings. Ready to get back into some football this weekend. Like we said, Thursday night at Huntington Beach High School, Los Alamitos and Edison. That's going to be a great game. Obviously, you'll be able to find all the coverage on Friday from the Thursday night action. And then you can also read the Friday previews for some great games. San Gabriel Valley League, the marquee matchups of the week. I know we already mentioned it. Downey and Dominguez, like we said, they are going to run the ball a lot. And after watching the spread offense for the last five weeks, it feels like I'm, I'm kind of excited to watch a fullback block this week. 
to watch some what we used to just refer to as football, JJ? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> there are some really good running backs in this game, namely Day Day Vigilant over at Downey. He obviously had an incredible year last year, helping the Vikings reach the CIF championship. He's already got almost 600 yards rushing on just 69 carries and eight touchdowns. Meanwhile, over at Dominguez, they have got a two-headed monster in Anson and Neil Pelusu. They both have over 600 yards rushing. Anson with seven TDs, Neil Pelusu with four. They are punishing, but the Downey defense is going to get Darian Franklin back this week, and that is huge because, well, he's huge. Yeah, he's really big for them. That'll be big time for them to get the cover boy back. Uh, Dominguez is still obviously operating without their best running back, so uh, they're, they've been hampered, but it hasn't looked like it at all. I no, mean, it's time to step up right now. It's it's next guy moments. You know, this is the time in the football season where everybody's got nicks and bruises. Everybody's hurt. It's time to step up because this game, you wish it was the last week, just like we were talking about the Los Alamitos Edison right. game. Absolutely, but it is worth noting the San Gabriel Valley League certainly looking like the strongest of the leagues in the press telegram area. Area. That Warren Paramount game is also intriguing because I think Warren, when you go four and one in your non-league schedule, it's exciting. But then you also want to see, okay, have you really improved or did you just schedule worse teams? So I think they could really make a big statement if they come out and do well against Paramount. Yeah, the the Pirates, their record really doesn't reflect how good they are because they have got some guys. Right. They got some dudes over there who can really break a game. And they open. played up at a division. They as really well. did. They really challenged themselves, and and Coach Howard wanted to do that. So he got what he wanted. Let's see if it pays off now once they do get to the SG. The other SGVO game, Linwood hosting Gar in the Moore League, uh, the game that everyone wants to know about, actually, JJ, the game people won't stop texting me about, Long Beach Poly visiting Compton in a rematch of last year's 99-9 win, and everyone's kind of been going, what's going on now? Personally, I don't really think this is going to be that notable. I don't know that many guys that you've heard of are really even going to see the field against the Tar Babes, so it'll be interesting to see what the strategy is, but especially with Dale Sal looming next week, I would think you're not really going to see a similar performance to that 99-9 win. That's fair. It's also a different Compton team. It absolutely is a different Compton team, but still struggling very much with numbers uh, and and issues along those lines. Lakewood visiting Wilson in the game that I'll be at. Very interested to see what happens. And this sort of, I would say at this point, the supposed sort of second-place game. uh, You know, Wilson, obviously, if they come out of it with a win, which seems... Very possible, given the amount of turmoil happening at Lakewood right now. We'll still have to prove themselves against Cabrillo and, and uh, yeah. Jordan and Milliken. But Wilson, I think, with the way that they've uh, played so far this year, have kind of put themselves in the driver's seat for that second spot. Yeah, two weeks ago I said there were three games that were going to decide second place in more league football. The first one was Lakewood Milliken. I believe this is the second one. Right. And then down the road, whoever wins this game, when they end up playing that third place team, that will be the third right. one. Like you said, the turmoil at Lakewood is really unfortunate because... Well, honestly, they really didn't do anything. You know, you've got a situation where Victor Bates gets kicked in the face during a football game. Update on that available on both websites right now. Victor Bates has officially confirmed that he is transferring to Buena Park. As of Monday, his name was not listed on the CIF Southern well, Section we also, website. We also confirmed with CIF Southern Section spokesman Tom Simmons that they had not received paperwork on him. So it's not just that there was a lag, but as of Monday afternoon, he apparently had left the school. He, he told JJ that he left the school, but yeah. had not put in transfer paperwork. Work. So who knows if he's just going for academic reasons or if he is going to try and get some eligibility still this year. And this is a kid with some talent, man. He's verbally committed to Oregon State, so definitely a big moment in his life to kind of decide where he needs to be to get the best out of a situation. Meanwhile, at Milliken, the player in question in that incident on the field has been kicked off the team. Head coach Derwin Henderson confirmed that also on Monday. So, I mean, less than two weeks later, the two kids who were involved in that thing are both not on the team that they were on two weeks ago. Also, another update out of this horrible situation after that Lakewood-Milliken game is that Lakewood head coach Jimmy Nolan is going to have to sit this game out because he was ejected after a confrontation with the referees after the Lakewood-Milliken game. Weird side note to that story is that Jimmy Nolan or anyone on the football field at the moment realized that he was ejected from the football game and it was Saturday when he got an email from his administration so he's gotten a lawyer and with the support of his administration Administration has put in an appeal to the district and also the CIF and the officials. It doesn't look like anything's going to come of it, unfortunately, but it is one of those situations where it's a he said, he said, 
and it's just not good. In the final more league game, Cabrillo will be visiting Jordan in a battle of a couple of teams who've kind of shown us something the last few weeks, so curious to see how they'll do against each other. For the rest of the previews, full previews of every game will be available on Presstelegram.com, and if you're just looking for the Long Beach specific schools, you can go to GazetteSports.com for those. On Friday night, make sure you're following us on Twitter for all of the live scores updates at PT Gazette Sports. That's it. That's all. There ain't no more. Another episode of Long Beach Sports Talk in the books. We survived. We, we, we survived without the, the one who we will not be naming. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has helped us put together this show at Enough talking about that, Press Telegram yeah. and GazetteSports.com. <laughs> we will see you in the stands this weekend. Obviously, more than just football going on in the local area, and you can find all of that coverage right here. For Mike, for Tyler... For everyone else. Oh no, I did it! I was gonna say for the other guy. I was gonna say for the other guy. Whatever. We'll see you guys in the stands this weekend. Take care, Long Beach.